welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vay, Nur, Chuck, and this is The Thunder Show. The collection is growing. Thundercats, biggest collection in America soon. With your help, get in those attics, get in those basements. Boss Man coming through with eBay on this one. Very much thank Tom. I appreciate it. Some cool figures here. This guy's really crazy. Look what this guy can do. Look what this guy can do. Mott, we are having fun, and I am just wondering right now in my mind what people are thinking if they are watching this show for the first time. Wine Library TV, Thundercat Toys, talk about the wine, and I will. But first, I'm going to talk about commitment. That commitment is what I am giving you. I drove here today for an hour from New York City for my apartment, and now I'm taping and I'm driving back. Forgot to tape two episodes yesterday, but did not feel like keeping you hanging on episode 299. So I got a meeting in the city in about 45 minutes. I have no idea how we're gonna pull this off, tape it and be there. But the commitment is to the Vayner Nation, to the Vaniacs. Mott, did we zoom in yet? I know we saw that. Uh Uh-huh, see? I'm on the ball while I'm committed. I'm feeling good and I'm very fascinated. And that is the key to today's episode. This is the fascination episode. I've got four wines here that really fascinate me. I was looking yesterday at some of the stuff that come in and has come in while I've been gone uh, on the West Coast the last couple of days and I was looking for some different things. I know I have to do a Sherry episode. I know I have to do a Puyak episode. Uh, I apologize, you know, the Sherry episode starting again, that Heat episode, legendary status. Uh, but we will definitely get to that, I promise. I am, uh, I am definitely going to do that. The original bucket is back in the house and let's get right into the wines because that's really why you're here, um, to get a little bit of knowledge and not to hear my yapper. So we're starting with the 2007 Whoop Whoop Chardonnay and I did not stutter. This is the 2007 vintage. Mott, how do they do that? Does it have something to do with the southern hemisphere and the sun and all that jazz so they're kind of like six months ahead in the growing season? It does. And so what I want you to know is that I'm pretty excited. This is my first 2007. I always really get antsy and pumped up and it's always a good time to try something new um, from the new vintage. 07's been a very good year to me and to Wine Library TV and hopefully to all you Vaniacs. So uh, I'm excited about this. Now it's got some really nice color, not too shabby at all. Um, A little bit lighter than most Chardonnays. Again, southeastern Australia, this is eight US dollars. Whoop Whoop has made a big name for itself. I know a lot of people drinking the Shiraz out there. Uh, I've been very impressed with the way this brand has grown. Uh, I think it's kind of that step up above Yellowtail for a lot of people mentally. I have not really been tasting these wines for about three or four years since I've discovered them, so I'm kind of excited about trying the 07. Let's give it a little bit of a sniffy sniff. I like how sniffy sniff started off so nice and now it's like straight anger. Really citrusy nose. Uh, I get a little bit of a, a peanut almond component on the nose, which I find fascinating. I do get a little bit of a, of almost like a uh, caramelized, um, yeah, like a caramelized pecans. Like take some pecans and caramelize them. Throw some almond shells around them, and that's what this smells like. It's kind of fascinating, but there's definitely a butterscotch caramel aspect to it. Let's give it a whirl. You know, a lot of times kids experiment when they're young with things that they shouldn't. And I'm a little fascinated today, so I'm experimenting myself. And this is one I should have never, ever, ever experimented with. This is an absolutely appalling and atrocious effort. Um, Really as bad of a Chardonnay as I've come across in a while. Uh, Very thin, extremely awkward, rotten lemon explosions in my mouth. And as much as I love RLEs, this is a time where I can't even handle it. Um, As awkward and as difficult a Chardonnay as I've ever had, clearly to me, I've had at least 10 Chardonnays out of big five liter jug bottles that have been as good if not better than this wine. No creaminess, which is fine. Really now, now disaster. Just an unpleasant uh, experience in my mouth. I'm gonna score this wine 54 points. 50 being the bare minimum. I'm gonna give it four points because I'm just a good guy. Other than that, and probably because 
I want to throw it up for Victor Hobson, linebacker, New York Jets. But this is really shocking and awkward, and I know some people are going to say, well, is it because it's new? But I've done this kind of thing every year with the 06, 05, 04, usually out of Australia because of the Southern Hemisphere situation. Um, this is really something that needs to be really looked at by this winery because this is really, really a struggle. And this is a winery that kicks butt. I mean, honestly, with all due respect to this review, this is a winery that's brought some thunder in the past. It's almost Sauvignon Blanc-like, but it tastes terrible. It's really bad. Let's move on. This is the Bonnie Dune, which is a legendary winery in California. Syrah Le Poser. It's the Poser. I mean, really, that's why they called it this. Now, this is where it gets very interesting. This wine is 13 US dollars. Lucky number 13, because it's my sister's birthday. She was born on Friday the 13th, so I consider that a tremendously lucky and phenomenal day. I love you, Elizabeth Novello. Um, 78 points, Robert Parker. 90 points, Stephen Tanzer. So I'm here to settle the debate. 13 bones, and I'm really, really kind of fascinated by this. It's Central Coast Syrah. I, I like Syrah from the Central Coast. 13 bones, very unusual, where Tanzer is traditionally a more conservative critic. Parker is kind of more of a higher scorer when he likes things. P Parker said this should be called a poser Syrah, not the Le Pose. And, uh, and uh, Tanzer liked it. So really a lot, 90 points for him is quite unheard of for California Syrah in this price point. So I'm extremely fascinated where I fall in between outside, above, below. I'm curious where I will land. The color is acceptable and appreciated. Um, dark, uh, no fingers through, can't see the fingers. The fingers disappear. Let's give it a little bit of a sniffy sniff. The nose is fascinating. Um, I, I, I do get a little bit of a cherry sprinkled with a, with like cocoa powder with a good significant shot of curry on top as well. So now this strawberry is getting a little awkward. It's got the cocoa, but it's got the curry as well. And now the strawberry is kind of looking up at you and saying, make up your mind, sweet and sour. But I kind of like that combo. I'm a big fan of curry and this definitely has it on the nose. Actually quite substantially. I almost feel like there's a hint of toothpaste in here as well and that's kind of a little interesting and making it fun. Very different kind of nose, kind of maybe pointing to why we have such different uh, reviews. Let's give it a whirl. Let's start off with this. The other day I did a kosher episode and we did that high-end Covian Cabernet where Parker gave it a 92, I give it a 69. And I've been emailed by everybody uh, about that wine. Actually more people agreeing with me than I realized. At first it was all like you had a wrong bottle, blah, blah, blah. People are very respectful, I appreciate that. I'm not perfect so you can bust my chops. It's really nice emails. But it's definitely uh, a wine that I'm lining up for next week's revisit episode. There's another wine that I rated a long time ago uh, that I rated poorly on the show and I had recently that I loved. So now I've got to kind of break the score. So, you know, there's always different days for palates. I think Parker had an off day or an off bottle in this scenario. Sometimes people don't pick up on the, uh, on the corkness or what have you. Now clearly, that's gonna be difficult since this was a screw top. So that's gonna kind of throw that theory out the window. Uh, where this gets very interesting is I just don't see how Parker could rate this wine this low. Is it a little fake action? Indeed it is, but so is so much of what you see. Heck, I was just in LA, there was plenty of fake stuff going on there. Um, but people seem not to mind for the most part. And the same thing with wine. I think we're starting to correct that a little bit. Um, and uh, I think this is a pretty good wine actually. It gets a little too fake for me as well, but boy, there's a leather venison component going on here. And I'm not talking about pleather. I'm talking about real leather shoes and you know, throw a little you know, deer guts on it. And it sounds awful, but I'm telling you, it's a very fascinating, interesting flavor. Um, I'm thinking, um, 
What I'm really interested in right now is having a French onion soup with this. That's one of my favorite all-time weird combo action things that I do that you may not realize. That's one of them. I'm a big fan of venison-driven, leathery wines, mainly Syrah because of that, a lot of times from their own region, with tremendous, phenomenal French onion soup. And I would love for you guys to try that out. Now, this has got a little bit of pepper. and substantial substance. Uh, I like this wine. Maybe not quite as much as Tanzer. But I'm gonna give this wine 88 plus, which I think is a buy at 13 bones. Probably a pass because that is Dan Marino's number and we all know collectively that he's a jerk off. But that being said, Dan, if you're watching, you're not a jerk, yeah, you're a jerk off. I mean, I'm a Jets fan. That's just the way it is. Dave Jennings. <laughs> Dave Jennings. Um, and so that's a scoop. I think this is a good wine. I think uh, with any kind of meal, it pairs real well. This wine lasts for three to seven years. is a very good number for this wine. It's got some dry tannins. It's a fascinating wine. It was fascinating to kind of see where the critics went on this one. I'm going Tanzer on this one. Let's move on. Fascination number three. This came in last week. And uh, unfortunately, when I pre-taped the kosher episodes, it wasn't here. But this is the legend of... of Israel, really. This is the uh, Domaine du Castel, uh, 2004 Grand Vin, and this is a Bordeaux blend. And now this wine is 60 US dollars, and it's from the Judean Hills. It is 70% Cabernet, 25% Merlot, 5% Petit Verdot, unfined, unfiltered, and it is also reviewed and rated by the legendary and really the guy in Israel, Daniel Rogoff. And Rogoff is uh, somebody I have an enormous amount of respect for and appreciate his uh, point of views on, on the wines from Israel. Uh, he's a great critic out in that country and, and he deserves to be really recognized for what he's bringing to that country. He's got a tremendous palate and a great focus. Do I agree with him every time? Absolutely not. Do I agree with myself every time? Absolutely not. Do I hate Chris Mott? Yes. I mean, this is how it goes. I mean, you can't agree with everybody. We've got our own palates and our own tastes and you need to embrace your inner palate, your inner wine self-esteem and not worry about what everybody else says. If you're buying wine for investment, it's good to buy based on Parker. But if you're buying wine because you love wine and you want to drink wine and you want to share wine, don't let anybody ever tell you what's good and bad and if they do, Hit me up with an email, I will fly out there. Blind tasting, humble city, baby. All right, so this I'm really excited about because this is the top Israeli wine. I've not had the 04 now, 03 I had, which I thought was extraordinary. Uh, was really the top wine from Israel that I think I've ever had. It was a very good year in 03 in Israel. 04 is a solid vintage. Uh, Rogoff has scored this as high as he did the 03, so I'm super static for this. It's got tremendous color. Um, really profound color. Now this is really made in the top notch first growth Bordeaux style. Uh, you've got the castles on the label, I mean on the back of the label. Um, you got the vineyard shot, it's the classic Bordeaux label, Bordeaux blend. It's got 5% Petit Verdot. Say it with me, PV is the most underrated grape in the world. So I'm glad to see that and I'm really excited to try this. And right off the bat, it goes very classic Bordeaux on you. Uh, it's got some chalkiness, a little bit of cellar dust, as I like to call it, on the nose. I also get some green components, which I like quite a bit. Ah, forgot to turn off the phone. Little Brussels sprouts action, um, and uh, and and a beautiful. Um, what is that? Um, a beautiful blackberry jam that's a little zingy and tangy. Now, this is fascinating wine. The, uh, the chalkiness and a little bit of the Brussels sprouts mixed in with that blackberry component, that fine line of fruits and vegetables. When you go FV on me, I appreciate. And so I'm appreciating this wine in a big time way. I'm super static based on the bouquet. You know I love the noses. Let's give this a whirl. real deal. 24 months in new French oak, but not over oaked. Why? The power of the fruit. The fruit here is immense. The mouthfeel, explosive. Very rich, ridiculously silky on the palate. Um, this, taste, this is a wine, if you really, really want to have fun, and you're rolling like that, you're balling like that, 
buy this bottle, bring it to a blind tasting of Top Notch Bordeaux, and watch in horror as the people's faces are like, they can't believe it. This is Top Notch. This is a winery that uh, I'm super pumped to kind of introduce to enormous amounts of people. We, we did the kosher wines the other day. Uh, they were, for lack of a better word, a little bit of a flop. Um, this is far from a flop. I'm gonna score this wine 93 points. And I'm gonna tell you right now, as far as it goes, this is a wine I would drink more than yesterday's Robert Young Sion. More classic, goes with more meals. Um, even though yesterday's was a 93 plus, tells you exactly what the scores are all about, right? Um, lamb. I can't stop screaming lamb. This is a wine that has the tannin structure and the complexity to last for 10 to 15 years. The long finish, I mean, here's where it gets scary, guys. The reason I'm babbling a little bit is I'm kind of going through and still tasting second and third tier flavors on the finish. This finish has now lasted almost a minute, which is the clear indication of classic wines that have got flavor for days. And this wine's got flavor for days. And listen, you know, somebody might walk in and have a Chateau Latour and you'd be like, oh. You know, but when you bring this, I'm telling you, you're gonna stun people. I recommend bringing it blind because preconceived notions, the PCNs are the scariest things out there and this is way up there. Can't get enough of that one. And finally, give it a good solid rinse. This gets real fun. Why well, didn't you use a champagne glass? It's okay. What you have here, interesting label, little art deco. We have the Concilius Selim Sparkling Blanc, and this is a very interesting wine from Italy. It is mainly about 90 or so percent Aglianico and a little percentage of Fiano, maybe even less. Now, Aglianico is a red grape. However, you'll notice that this is very white in color because it's no skin contact. 15 US dollars. Did we mention how expensive this was? I almost feel like I didn't. This last one was 60 US dollars, just in case I didn't do that. And you know, I think I might have not you done did. that. I did good. 15 bones for this wine. This is shockingly interesting because this is a sparkling wine from Italy using a red grape that is a white sparkling wine. Aglianico, one of my favorite wines. If you haven't uh, checked it out, please search. You can search up here on winelibrarytv.com, any wines, different wines. This way you don't have to email me and tell me to do a Barolo show when I've done seven of them. Let's give this a whirl. A little snippy sniff time. Beautiful uh, peach meets sour cream, like creme fraiche on the nose. Very interesting. It's got a little bit of a pastry-esque kind of feel to it. Very vibrant. I almost get like a chocolate chip cookie dough without the chocolate chips, so it's like a cookie dough flavor on the nose. Let's give it a whirl. I like it. The nose is very pleasant. You may or may not know this, but when it comes down to it, sparkling wines are probably my favorite wines in the world. I'm a big fan of oysters, and nothing is better than great champagne. But we've also been screaming about Cava and other sparkling wines. We're really ready for a big sparkling wine episode. We'll be doing that soon. So we can all pop them on opening football day. That'd be nice. That Sunday's right around the corner. Sparkling wine is probably the category that I personally am the toughest critic of because I'm, I'm really in tune, as they say. This wine has beautiful cinnamon toast crunch action on the mouthfeel that I appreciate. Gets a little grainy, um, sourdough coming through again. It's got very interesting kind of cooking type aspects to the flavor profile. Um, however, it finishes a little short. There's a little less, there's like a, almost like a fake Splenda kind of component on the mouthfeel, which I don't like. The finish is a little short. It's an awkward little wine. It's, it's kind of nice, it's fun. It's not legendary or unbelievable. However, it's $15 and the junk sparkling that the Corbells and all this crap that people drink in this price point, that scares the piss out of me. Um, this is definitely a better alternative. And we scored this wine 86 points. 
because it is what it is. I gotta call it like I see it. But this is still better than 90% of the stuff out there that all scores in the 80 and under range. So definitely something worth seeking out, a little different, not my total cup of tea. You know, it had a chance, you know? It just, it's not all the way there. Um, question of the day, what fascinates you? Because you, with a little bit of me, we are, ch oh, ho, 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 ho. See, hope you're watching all the way through. Today is 299, tomorrow is episode 300. We said we were gonna do the two pack tomorrow with you, and in the two pack, We've got two wonderful wines, which I'm excited about. And a, a Rioja and a Malbec. And we're gonna be doing that with you. Now, we, originally we thought we would do it live, 9 p.m. tomorrow. We did some tests yesterday based on our numbers, and we will crash. We will definitely crash, and then what we realized was, you're gonna have friends over, and we didn't really wanna ruin that night. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do like a normal episode, this way people can come at their own time and convenience. So roughly it'll probably go up around six or seven tomorrow uh, afternoon, and then people come in and check it out, and then when your party's ready, you can kind of watch. So we're gonna do live very shortly. We know what we need to do, but we didn't wanna risk it. We didn't wanna roll the dice on this one and kind of come up snake eyes when you had friends over. It's gonna make me look bad. I like to look good. Because I do. Because you, I had to do that because now people are mad at me. Because you, with a little bit of me, this is a long shot, Mike, you're far away. Not even close. Who's that, Eli Manning? We're changing the wine world, aren't we?